Hey all viewers, this evening I am going to talk about another topic on my Elden Ring forum. Now this particular topic has to do with gold, amber, glintstone, and the golden land. Now, <clears throat> maybe some of you have went to the forums and you've read all of the topics. Um, it may be a while before I add another topic to this forum, but um, I do intend to do videos on all of the topics. Now, this particular matter is one that I am sure that nearly every Elden Ring player has thought about. And in order for us to understand the subject fully, many of us, um, or at least many players, are not particularly very, um, how should it be said, cognizant of some particularly antique ways of thinking, very old-fashioned ways of thinking about um, the world. Um, the earth, you know, the stars, um, heaven, things of a supernatural nature. Now, I'm going to ask you all to sort of put your mind in that sort of antiquated state so that you can understand some of the concepts that we're going to be talking about. Now, we have the Elden Stars and Founding Reign of Stars. And I think that we can conflate the phenomenon that is, or at least the phenomenons that are described in both of these particularly interesting, um, you know, spells, this incantation and this sorcery. So firstly, we have the Elden Stars, which says... Um, it is said that, a, that long ago, the Greater Will sent a golden star bearing a beast into the, gold, into the lands between, which would later become the Elden Ring. Um, of course, we know that is the Elden Ring, that is the fish, um, the Elden Beast, um, is, in my opinion, a fish with, with a type of constellation in it, um, and I personally associate that Elden base with Pisces. Um, and that has some different implications, which one day we will talk about. But anyhow, we will compare that to the last part of Founding Reign of Stars. Thought to be the founding glintstone sorcery, the glimpse of the primeval current that the astrologer saw became real. And the star's amber rained down on this land. Now, as we can see, this founding reign of stars is blue, but they are talking about amber. Now, truth be told, that may seem strange to some of us. However, when we take this Elden Stars into consideration, it maketh a good deal more sense because this the sort of gold spells and the incantations that have to do with the Golden Order and the Earth Tree seem like they are of amber. And the star that basically reigned upon the land, that was the principal star, it would seem, was this Elden Beast. And the gold seems to be the principal, brightest sort of star that is actually raining upon the land and is sort of making a collision with the earth. Now, when we talk about the earth in an antiquated sense, we are talking about what may be called a flat plane. Quite seriously. Um, if we are going to think about this in a very antiquated fashion, we are going to have to really take seriously the idea of a flat earth, of earth being still, of earth being passive. Now, 
thinking about the earth in that way is something that many of you, peradventure, are not in the least familiar with and you don't really think like that. But in order to understand these old ideas, we have to get in the mindset of really thinking about this as a person in the medieval age or primeval age would think of it as. Now, I've seen many very interesting YouTubers, lore tubers, so to speak, and people on Reddit talking about very interesting scientific theories. Now, here on this channel and on this forum for the most part, which you can participate in as well, I will give give all of the the viewers of this sh- channel the link um, when I put this video up in the description. I myself focus on some of the sort of antiquated ways in which a person, a very old sort of... Um, Oh, sorry. Um, my mouse fell down, and very sorry for the screen. That was my mistake. Okay, here we go. Very sorry. I'm using OBS, and everything is being done in real time. Anyhow, um, I'm trying to present this in a very antiquated fashion, in which we are basically trying to understand this as a person who lived in an an environment in which the earth was considered to be still, the earth was considered to be passive, the earth was considered to be feminine, and heaven was considered to be masculine. Um, Now, some of you, peradventure, are familiar with the Greek god Uranus and the mythology associated with him, and how basically he was sort of the active force upon Gaia, who was sort of a passive, who was considered to be a goddess, but nonetheless, the idea in most world religions is that the earth is passive and heaven is fertile. Heaven is sort of, all life is considered to have become, to have come from heaven. And basically the idea is is that, um, whether we're considering God as a prime mover or whatnot. Earth is considered to be malleable um, and sort of shaped by God. And in a sense, the idea of an astrobiological process in which heavenly substances sort of crash down upon the Earth is a more carnal sort of representation of, of sort of a heavenly being, sort of... Um, affecting the earth in such a way that life is sort of coming from heaven and sort of being seeded into the earth. Now, this idea as displayed in Elden Ring is quite interesting, but um, it doth have a relevance because it is, an hus- it is a historical concept. Um, now, there will be some definitions that are worth reviewing. One is aerolite, which um, this is coming from a dictionary of symbols. Um, A symbol of spiritual life which has descended upon the earth. A symbol of revelation of the other world made accessible and and of the heavenly fire in its creative aspect. That is to say, as seed, tradition has it that just as there are upper waters... There is also upper fire. The stars symbolize the unattainable aspect of this fire. Now, what they are talking about regarding upper waters. Some of you who are familiar with Genesis, the story on the Bible, in which a firmament is talked about. A firmament is a sort of idea that above the sky, there is a barrier of clear glass. Um, Now, in the sky... In the firmament, so to speak, um, or at least contained in the firmament, are stars, are planets. Um, And the word star is very interesting because that has a good deal of implications, which we shall talk about very soon. Um, 
the firmament has the sun, the moon, the stars, and all manner of different um, celestial bodies in it. This is a very interesting way to think about um, the universe, um, the cosmos. But this idea was um, very prevalent. Um, And to some extent it is now to some Christians who are fundamentalists. I myself am included in that category in which, quite frankly, we take the words of what may be called our our mythology as literal and that we believe them. Now, people may think what they want about that, but these ideas, they were accepted by the Greeks, they were accepted by um, people all over the world and China even. Um, China has a very interesting idea of the universe or of the earth, or at least it used to. Um, there used to be ideas that the, um, the, the, I mean, there were ideas that the earth was square, different types of ideas, but the earth was considered to be still. It was considered to be flat. It was considered to be passive. It wasn't considered to be a moving body in the cosmos. The earth was something special and the idea was is that there are forces outside of the earth in the firmament. Um, you may call them stars. Star has an interesting definition. Celestial bodies which are acting upon the earth and basically a prime mover or a god is sort of controlling and sort of how should it be said, affecting the movements of these planetary, these celestial bodies, so to speak. So there are different forces working upon the earth. Um, star rain, so to speak, uh, and astrobiology, um, as stated. So this is the idea of upper waters. In other words, the idea was is that the firmament was a barrier between this earth and the waters above the firmament. However, above that firmament were whole different realms. In some cases, as said in this quote, there were upper fires. Now the stars symbolize the unattainable aspect of this fire. Aerolites and meteorites are its messengers. And hence, they are sometimes associated with angels and other heavenly hierarchies. It must be remembered that the iron first used by man was meteoric, um, which may account for the common root of the word sidereal and other words beginning with the prefix sidero. Um, And I do believe this word is worthy worthy of looking at. Now, I did not have my dictionary program ready. But I can open that in one moment so that we can see what this word means and perhaps look at its etymology or whatever we might be interested in. Um, And I will make this just a bit bigger. Um, In astronomy, no, no, not, that's not what I'm looking for. Of or related to or expressed in star in relation to stars or constellations. I do like some etymology dictionaries. Um, Interesting. Okay. Sitas. Sitas, star. Okay. Star and constellation. Um, In other words, beginning with the prefix sidero. The belief in a symbiotic relationship between the heavenly and the terrestrial worlds lies at the root of the idea of the cosmic marriage, a concept with which primitive astrobiological thought sought to explain the analogy, as well as the tangential relationship between the antithetical worlds of heaven and earth. Um, very interesting. And cosmic marriage is something that we are going to talk about um, later as we start to explore these concepts 
but it really doth explain a good deal in this game. Um, now, we have the Onyx Lords great swords, and the Onyx Lords are also a very interesting subject. Um, a weapon unique to the Onyx Lords, a race of ancients with skin of stone, who were said to have risen to life when the meteor struck the earth. Now, obviously, there are a great deal of entities of type of beings in Elden Ring that are made in stone, and that is very interesting. The dragons, the onyx lords, um, and we are going to talk more about that at some point. However, um, that is a great sword. It says, forged from golden-hued meteorite ore, meteoritic ore. So in other words, we know that some of these meteorites, they have gold in them. So, in other words, we know gold and amber have fallen from the sky. And gold and amber, they're, they're both related to the sun. So, we have some other quotes to learn about this, some of these concepts. In Hindu doctrine, gold is the mineral light. According to Gyunon, however you pronounce that name, the Latin word for gold, aram, is the same as the Hebrew for light, or Jung quotes the delightful explanation offered by the alchemist Michael Mayer in De Circulo Physico Quadrato to the effect that the sun, by virtue of millions of journeys round the earth, or conversely, has spun threads of gold all around it. Gold is the image of solar light and hence of the divine, the divine intelligence. If the heart is the image of the sun in man, and the earth is gold. Very interesting. So we also have here, um, let's see, yellow pieces of amber, yellow polished pieces of amber, after all, are said to be solidified sunbeams. In antiquity, in antiquity, Tears of Phaeton, the son of Helios. Astrologers associate amber with the planet Mercury. Now that is very interesting. Um, so we have a golden star. And meteors that have golden ore and the amber of the stars raining upon the land. So in other words, from this quote, we can basically assume in an antiquated understanding Amber is considered to be sunlight, solidified sunlight. Now imagine that. We have amber, the amber of the stars. So basically, you know, even today, in this day and age, we consider the sun to be a star. Now the sun was considered to be, especially in antiquated times, sort of a body in itself, not necessarily a star, but nonetheless, um, if the sun, if amber is considered to be um is considered to be solidified sunlight then or solidified sunbeams then obviously the amber of the stars is solidified starlight now this is very interesting so basically the principal star that apparently reigned upon the land was the Elden Beast um, that became the Elden Ring um, as far as we know it now, all that comes down from the heavens, the thunderbolt, the aerolite, the meteorite, rain or dew has a sacred character. Now, another word for sacred is holy. Um, we know that particular weapons and spells do basically what we may call, as far as I know, holy damage. So, this idea of a sort of principal goodness that is heavenly that sort of affects the passive earth, that gives it life. This is an idea that it's, is expressed in Elden Ring. So now we have these glint stones. So the idea we would have is that our solidified, our is, you know, our glint stones solidified star beams, our glint stones the stars amber. So there are some interesting items that really indicate that 
What glintstone is is nothing less than solidified starlight. Um, so we have here starlight shards. Um, that is a prized item that was once used in the Eternal City um, as an ingredient in intoxicating draughts. So it's an ephemeral sliver that gives off a pale blue light. Um, what remains of a passing flash of starlight. So this is very interesting. We would imagine that um, this is sort of the substance of glintstone, I would say, to be entirely honest, um, at least to some degree. Um, it is blue, glintstone is blue. Um, I think there is most certainly a connection. Um, so we have two swords that we're going to look at. The first is the Karen Knight Sword. Um, this Knight Sword could serve as a catalyst, letting them, um, these Knight Swords could serve as catalysts, letting them wield sorceress battle skills. Despite numbering fewer than 20, this power made them a match for even the champions of gold in battle, um, which would make sense if if both of, if Amber, which is sort of um, associated with the Golden Order, or at least, you know, Amber is gold. Gold is basically a very similar color to Amber. You know, if we're associating that with incantations and holiness, and Glintstone is also of the stars, then both of them are on par. So, of course, if they're both using starlight as their main energy source. Obviously, the Carrion Rorty can basically face the, you know, the, um, the worshippers of the Earth Tree of America on equal footing because they're both using the power of the stars. Now we have the, Mequel the Mequelan Night Sword, um, a, sum a sumptuous piece. It has never offered it has never been offered to any knight an ill-starred sword with no master now I read the top part of that swords forged by servants of Mequella of the Halleck tree with a design modeled after those of the Carrion knights instead of glintstone however amber from the Halleck tree is embodied is embedded in the blade now I forgot to read the part about the Carrion Knight Sword where it says straight sword embedded with a blue glintstone. So this has glintstone, a blue glintstone, and this has um this McQuellan Knight Sword has amber. So basically we see glintstone being used and amber being used, and they are both on equal they are both equally effective. Okay, they allow the user to use magic battle skills. And basically they are they imbue the weapon with some form of magic. Now, obviously, from what we have read, we would imagine that the power of these swords comes from starlight, ultimately. Because if we consider glintstone to be solidified starlight and amber to be solidified starlight, that make of perfect sense. Now the definition of star is quite is quite important in a particular um, context. So many of us, or at least many people, have a modern idea of stars. They have a very modern idea of of celestial bodies. And so they do not think of stars in the same way that the people of particularly ancient times used to think of stars. And so today we think of stars, we think of a sort of gaseous body of fire or whatever new type of um, modern scientific idea, which, you know, we sort of think of stars is very specific. We have a very specific idea of what a star is. However, a long time ago, 
stars used to be considered basically objects as comet, meteor, or planet in the sky re- resembling a luminous point and usually only bright enough to be seen at night, specifically fixed star. In other words, the old ideas about stars was um, were that it is a heavenly body as the sun or moon, also the earth. Um, obsolete, we have pole star. And there is a shield in the game that sort of has a picture of a pole star on it and even says so in the item description, which is very interesting and something that I do plan to look at um, at some point in the future. However, now that we have this definition for star, this is going to help us understand this game and some of the references we are going to come across. This is going to help us understand some old astrological and the very antiquated ideas and this is going to help us think in a very antiquated way because I think it is very obvious that the authors Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin and whoever worked upon this narrative they are presenting a very antiquated type of story and they are really presenting us antiquated s- concepts used in a very, or at least they're presenting us concepts that are used in a very antiquated way, not necessarily a modern way. Um, Some of this, some of these ideas, we have to be very, we have to get ourselves used to thinking of them in a very old-fashioned classical way. Um, So we have in in biblical and classical literature, star can refer to any of the heavenly bodies, including occasionally the sun and the moon. What we call a planet was a wandering star, Greek Astar Planetes. What we call a comet was a hairy star, Astar Cometes. Today, we call a meteor a shooting star or fallen star. Though, we know it is not a, me- a star in a strict sense. In the strict sense, Ovid once used a Sita star for the sun. Virgil likens an advancing army to a storm cloud cutting off the star. Um, abrupto sidere. Where the star must be, the sun, Aenid, um, Aenid, Seneca calls the moon the star of the night. This is very good. To read quotes like this, this is from a dictionary of symbols. Um, this is very good for of literary symbols, I mean. That is not the same book as the one that I had quoted before. Anyhow, this is very good. It is very good for us to read quotes like this so that we can familiarize ourselves with the old thinking, the old type of thinking of what a star was. This is quite good. Um, and this is what I like to do. Other people may disagree with this method. But I really do think that in Elden Ring, they're using old definitions old definitions of particular things, especially regarding stars. Now, in regard to the Great Club, the reason that I have decided to list this is because this particular item is from a branch of the Erd Tree. It is imbued with holy power. Um, We have the skill Golden Land. Now, this has implications in that it seems to indicate the golden and enchanted lands between, they were made so by the stars. They were made so by star rains. Now, these star rains are not literal stars like fire, fiery stars, bright stars crashing down. No, it is a whole host of heavenly substances, meteors, comets, um, in some cases, real actual starlight and stars sort of crashing down upon the earth, um, congealing into amber and glintstone. Now, among glintstone, this is a product of the stars. In some cases, there's hard glintstone. And I would say the hard glintstone that one particular club is made out of is not the starlight that has been congealed into the crystal glintstone. So there's there's a, there are differences, and these are all different types of substances that are basically imbuing the sort of infusing some type of life into the earth. The meteors, or rather the stars crash down, the meteorites, the aerolites, 
the you know and basically you have these men who sort of these these onyx lords who sort of come to life they're men of stone and this life is sort of coming from the heavenly regions and they're crashing down so the idea could be the first men were the onyx lords and from and these 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 stars um and all of these different types of substances sort of infuse the earth which is passive with life now this is a very carnal sort of reified idea of of god sort of affecting the formless earth in some way it isn't it is not necessarily very metaphysical but it is very physical um now this has some other implications but this is the idea it's a sort of astral astro biological process in a sense it doth it it doth have some connection to astro theology but in particular this is astrobiology this is the idea of life coming from heaven and um star rain sort of basically being like you know real rain sort of infusing the earth with, with, with life you know which is very interesting these star rains sort of contain all manner of substances um that is the idea so it was the cause of you know these star rains were the cause of all life it seems perhaps or perhaps not that is what the story seems to indicate the earth tree and the land itself bear off the essence of the stars and starlight that rained upon the earth it really seems as though the whole earth the whole lands between they were really sort of imbued with the power of the stars um so the halak tree seems to be a species of the earth tree it seemeth as though a um, mcquella I suppose that is how you pronounce that name, had taken, you know, per adventure, a seed of the earth tree or something of that sort and raised it. So, you know, the amber of of the helic tree would be of the same nature as the earth tree, which would be of starlight. It would be of the Elden Ring. It would be of the Elden Beast. It would be of the golden star that is the Elden, Elden Beast, um, that is the Elden Ring. And basically the idea is is that this Elden Star, this Elden Beast, this Elden Ring would have infused the land with life, with this type of sacredness of character. The trees would have been imbued with this sort of holy power, um, with this sort of lively energy. Um, And that is very interesting. So... um, you know that implication of the of amber and glintstone being both sort of products of sort of the real solidified starlight is quite incredible um there is much to talk about in regard to this matter there really is i think that i have basically explained the idea for you and I do plan to revisit this, this idea. Um, but anyhow, I will be putting the link in the, in the description to this forum. And if you want to join, please do. Um, I do plan to release more topics soon. Right now, I only have four, um, four topics that, um, I have written. I do plan to write more. Um, and it seems to be going quite well. Um, the next one that I'm going to do a video on is The Crone, Ronnie's Mentor, and the significance of that. Um, thank you for watching. May you be blessed. And farewell, viewers.